If you're growing cannabis plants indoors and want to know how to properly flush them, this Debaco University video is for you. All right, let's look at flushing indoor grown cannabis plants. So first off, I want you to realize that this, there is not a standardized method. No studies have been published to date to examine the exact process of flushing cannabis plants. This is why you're probably hearing and searching for this video because there's a lot of variability. However, this does not mean that it's not common practice as the idea to produce high quality bud is also to minimize the inputs. We wanna have the greatest uh, quality bud with the minimum amount of inputs to again, maximize the efficiency. So the goal of any flushing protocol uh, is to reduce nutrient concentrations in the root zone so the plant metabolizes what is already present in the plant tissue. So why we typically overwater plants as part of flushing to kind of flush out those excess salts, those excess nutrients with adding just pure water to the root zone of the cannabis plants. So what water properties are we looking for? Well, ideally water should be around room temperature, 70 to 75 degrees Fahrenheit, and have slightly acidic pH value of 6.0 to 6.3 to aid in the uh, ability to ensure nutrients are soluble and easily removed from the water. Meaning if you have cold water and the pH is off, that could affect the effectiveness of the ability to flush out those nutrients. That can impact that ability for that kind of flushing or the goal here of the flushing of those nutrients out, um, which is important consideration. So for the first nutrient to go, if you're flushing, what's going to be the first nutrient you're going to lose? Well, nitrogen is the most water soluble of the nutrients. So watch for a potential deficiency of this nutrient first in the plant. This is characterized by the yellowing of lower leaves, while the upper portions of the plant remain green, at least for a period of time. If you start to see this uh, yellow coloration, you might be flushing too early and too aggressively because the plant is visually showing you it's running out of nutrients, particularly nitrogen in this case. So this might be a sign, make note, look back at your records, you might be flushing a little too early or with a little bit too much water. Now the timing is very important when you're looking at this flushing process. The goal is to time the reduction in nutrients with the harvesting of the buds. When the plant runs out of nutrients, this should be very close to harvesting so there's no plant stunting or any chance of a potential yield reduction. This is best done if you're going to be harvesting the entire plant and not doing a selective bud harvest, as this may result in the second harvest being ne negatively impacted by the reduction in plant available nutrients. So just as the picture shows here, timing is very important. You want to be, have a comfortable idea of when you'll be harvesting your plants so you can plan your uh, no nutrient adding your flushing accordingly. Now, indoor substrate categories. Uh, so keep in mind, just because you're growing indoors doesn't mean everyone follows the exact same protocol. Hydroponics require the least amount of time between stopping nutrients and harvest, where substrate-based uh, indoor grows, uh, the exact type used can impact the timing. Now, if you're in a pure hydroponic uh, situation here, uh, if a type of essentially substrate-free system being used, such as aeroponics or deep water culture, the roots will immediately lose access to nutrients once you add in only plain water to their reservoir. So as a result, you should only be running plants with no nutrients for about a three to four day flush period if you're doing one of these growing situations. Otherwise, the risk of nutrient deficiencies will definitely increase. Now, looking at hydroponic substrate-based flushing, this gets a little bit more complicated because there's uh, many different substrate options. When plants are grown in the substrate dough, there will be some retention of nutrients, but this will be in part um, substrate dependent. For example, if you're growing in clay pebbles or other material that require near continual irrigation, uh, the three to four day recommendation for the hydroponic environment can be followed, meaning you once you determine I'm going to harvest my buds in about three to four days, then you can stop adding any nutrients and just only add water to the plants at that point. However, if you're growing in a peat moss or cocoa based substrate, the duration of time of flushing can be increased to four to seven days, almost a week from your plant harvest. If you're using soilless mix, this can get more complicated because of the variability of components that exist in this category. However, in general, this can be the longest interval should be about five to 10 days of period. Note that also, uh, based on how aggressively you have fed during the um, flowering cycle, uh, the end of that flowering phase will also impact the concentrations in substrate uh, will likely be. If you're a very heavy uh, nutrient feeder, you're going to have more nutrients in that um, substrate, potentially than if you were fertilizing a little bit more on the lighter scale. So take that also into consideration. 
What are the basics? Flushing protocol? Well, in a pure hydroponic setup, uh, simple change the water with new water that does not contain any nutrients but is pH appropriate. Fairly easy in that regards. However, if you're looking at a hydroponic substrate, then you irrigate as you normally would, only with water, no nutrients added, which should be until the water comes out of the container. Now, this water leaving the root zone should be tested for EC, electrical conductivity, parts per million. Uh, the goal is to increase the duration of, of irrigation until the readings are reduced to near plain water levels. So you know the water going in, you water the plant, you get the water coming out, you test that. If you're getting a very high reading initially, uh, keep watering, keep watering until that reading starts to become decreased. This will ensure the root zone has been properly and significantly flushed. So that's the basic flushing protocol. Everyone wants to know, oh, how much water should I add per container? But really having these meters, being able to dial it in for your particular setup is how you're going to ensure you're getting that proper flushing of that root zone.